we are getting fat. For the first time in human history, there are more people with an overweight medical problem than underweight people. That is, people with the exact opposite health problem. Since World War II, there's been an unprecedented increase in the infamous body mass index. 1.5 billion adults in the world are overweight, and 500 million are just plain obese. Many scientists are trying to understand this. Several, for example, are looking at the role of genetics. Genetic factors have been found to account for a significant amount of the differences in obesity across people. But any change related to genes is slow, and we are talking about a fast process here. Food prices? Maybe. There's also evidence of a nutrition transition, that is, more fat, and added sugar and less fruit and vegetables. But that is still not enough. So, what else can help us understand this pandemic? It just happens that this fast process shares its timeline with another civilization-defining event, globalization. Globalization has several dimensions, economic globalization, political and social globalization, like lifestyles, how many newspapers do you read, how many phone calls do you make, it can be measured in different ways. But for starters, one of the most generally accepted globalization indices has almost doubled in the last 40 years. The KOF index accounts for economic, political, and social data for almost all the countries in the world. In our study, we have linked this information with obesity and economics data for 26 countries over time. So what are our results? Does more globalization relate to more obesity? The answer is yes, they are correlated. Let me show you how. In the first graph, we have in the vertical axis the percentage of population in one country that is obese. In the horizontal, we have the globalization index. Now look at the trend. As countries are climbing up the globalization ladder, their population is getting fatter and fatter. We define as obese those with a body mass index above 30. Okay, in this set of countries, about 12% of the population is obese. Now, also notice that as globalization gets higher, this trend tends to smooth out. A quite likely increase in globalization, what we in research flag as one standard deviation, accounts for an additional two percentage points of obese population in one country. Now, the question is why? Well, for starters, as we can see in this second graph, when globalization kicks in, we do consume more calories. And let me tell you, this relation does not smooth out. As before, this additional increase in globalization implies the consumption of 75 additional calories per day, say, a small piece of fruit. The thing is that we are not always talking about healthy things. You should know that for one of those additional increases in globalization, population is consuming an extra 17 grams of fat per day. The relation is again clear and strong. So, as we said, globalization and obesity are connected. And remember that we also mentioned different types of globalization. There's our catch. We can explain the economic dimensions pretty well. For example, food prices going up, this usually means that we end up eating cheaper things, what we call junk food. The problem is that these clear associations that we understand from economics don't explain everything. They don't give us the full picture. And once all these obvious things are controlled for, we are left with the biggest, largest part of the mystery, the social dimension. It accounts for a very significant part of the results, but we don't understand exactly why. Like, does watching an American blockbuster make you eat more than being the fan of a classic French film? Or in other words, what's the role of cultural proximity, information flows, personal contact? They matter. But why? This is what we are set to discover. In the meantime, we should keep in mind that this phenomenon has implications for many industries. There are enormous opportunities related to health and well-being. But the rules of the game in the traditional healthcare landscape are changing. And the focus is now not only on finding a cure, but also on promoting prevention and healthy habits. But globesity is a much broader issue. 
food and beverage industry can play a key role and become a fundamental part of the solution, but it goes beyond that. There are companies that are developing sports clothes to promote healthier lifestyles. Other firms are bringing together big data, knowledge and technology to help you stay healthy. In other words, it's time to start thinking about health beyond traditional healthcare.